Hi everyone, Lori Flasco here. Uh, I help organizations wow their customers, create high performing uh, teams and leaders, and create cultures where people um, love to come to work. And in uh, researching my uh, new book, which uh, hopefully will come out next year, I get a chance to interview leaders, kind leaders, all around uh, Canada and, and North America and just find out a little bit more information from them. And most recently I was speaking to a kind leader that I think is kind and that's Fiona Peaceful. And Fiona Peaceful is at Niagara Health um, Systems and I asked Fiona in the last interview who she thought was the kindest leader and she just hands up right away said Dr. Robin Williams. So I am so um, thrilled and grateful Dr. Williams that you're here with us today. I'm, um, I'm going to just share quick information about Dr. Williams. You probably know her, know of her because she's so influ influential in public health today. But um, she has, uh, I, I knew her way back when my daughter was a baby and she was a pediatrician. And later in, in life, she went on to be and now is retired medical um, Medical Officer of Health at the Niagara Region, and then went to the province to work in in um, public health, and has continued to have a special interest in pediatrics. And she's still sharing her exp expertise um, with the world. So thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. Great, Lori. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I have. Um, I. I I know Fiona had said you were the kindest leader um, that she's met. And she also talked about how, you know, you have to make some really tough decisions along the way. Um, and, and, you know, I always think this kindness fluffy and, and, and how does that play out in leadership? So I want to find out from you, what does kindness mean to you and how has it impacted your leadership over the year? Years. So so, Lori, um, I appreciate that you started, uh, as you introduced me, to mention that I used to be a real doctor when I worked in pediatrics, uh, where I was clinically working with families and, and children. And I think I learned a lot from uh, parents in those scenarios, uh, you know, the honor and humility of working with them to try to solve whatever the issue, health issue was, or behavioral issue, or whatever for their child. And you get a lot farther with understanding where they're coming from uh, through kindness and so it's pretty hard to be unkind to kids in my view and so that was some background training uh, I think that really ingrained for me the importance of uh, kindness is related to empathy in my view being able to put yourself in that parent's shoes in the worry and anxiety that they're feeling in trying to um, make their way with this most important, crucial little person that they're trying to uh, love and raise in, in complex environments, in complex school situations sometimes. So I think I learned a lot about, uh, in general, parents are doing the best they can. They come from somewhere with their worries and anxiety. And sometimes it shows as anger or um, fear or frustration, but in general, it's from a place of love for their child. So I think that deeply impacted me in terms of understanding the importance of kindness in trying to lead folks forward. So then when I moved to the health department, the public health department at the region, I think a lot of those skills came with me in terms of realizing that uh, as we tried to work on, you know, bigger problems on um, policy problems, working with regional government, trying to get smoke-free environments for all of us across the community, that that um, freeing people up to do things smart and creatively through kindness was a pretty good leadership um, asset to have. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that you tap into that, the more that you see how hard folks will passionately, you know, follow your vision, impact your vision, work with you on the vision, in a way that's uh, significant and important. Now, does that mean that you can't be lovingly firm? No, because there are times when either things go off the rails or there's a misunderstanding or miscommunication or, and 
um, you do need to be lovingly firm about something as you do as a parent, right? That there are times where you do have to be lovingly firm, but that doesn't mean you're not kind. So mm -hmm. I think it's been a very important part of, of the way in which, um, you know, my leadership style evolved. And I probably put that back to parents, having learned that from parents. I love that you said it's a leadership asset amongst many and and I, I know we talked about sometimes it can be tough and, and kindness maybe can be tough. Um, what, what happens in those moments for you? Um, I think in general that my default, my knee reaction is, is pretty calm. I, I don't move to rage or fear. Maybe that goes back to my own early childhood. I don't know, but in general, my thought is when someone's you know terribly distressed, upset, or anxious, gosh, I wonder where this is coming from. I need to try to understand this better. Where can we find common ground? Um, you know, to try to move whatever the issue is forward. In terms of kindness and leadership, I think there are a lot of unkind um, modeling leadership out there, particularly south of the border at the moment, where it really is not valued nor an asset, and it's seen as a weakness. And I think all the more reason that we need to pay attention to it at this moment in time. I love that one of our stellar public health leaders, Dr. Bonnie Henry in BC, uh, closes her media updates quite regularly with, you know, the notion of um, be calm, be kind, be safe. And I think the fact that she chooses that one of three constant messages that she sends to us is to try to counterbalance some of the unkindness that's evolving uh, in leaders. Um, in leaders. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you, you and I were talking and you use the term kindness epidemic. I think that is just a great term. What does it mean to you? Um, well, I, I use that because I think kindness works two ways. You give kindness and you get kindness back. It gives back to you to be kind and it frees you up too for to be creative, to be thoughtful, to be empathetic. So, um, I mean, I think it is just like COVID's a pandemic. I think kindness could be an epidemic. You know, mm -hmm. the more you give, the more it gives. It gives forward and it gives backwards. So mm -hmm. I, I totally think uh, you're onto something Laurie that we do need to shine a light on kindness at this moment in time because we all need to understand where everyone else is coming from because we need to all come together around some of the important public health measures that are going to protect us as individuals and protect each other protect mm -hmm. our kids protect our parents etc well and one of the things that you you mentioned was how when you're a kind leader you set the you, it allows people to, um, to feel comfortable and free in their work environment, which adds to creativity and um, solution-focused ideas and, and all of that. And, and, yet, and we know that when you're kind and actually doing kind acts, because you said it's giving and receiving, that research shows that stress levels decrease. Um, productivity does increase, happiness increases. And so I, I think all of that, right, when we think about the brain and how it works, plays into being creative and not it's having good. fear of failure. It may not be the driver for the work environment, but it's good for the work environment. It yes. is about efficiency and people wanting to come to work with energy and enthusiasm, feeling that it's a safe place where they're valued. And kindness is a part of that. Now, you can't fill everybody up you know it's never good for everybody no matter what your leadership style is but in general i think that it's a flavor a piece of leadership that um that is good for you but is also very good for those that work with you mm -hmm. very good thank you and so you know one of the things also as we're talking about this is the impact what, what is the impact and why would business leaders, entrepreneurs, um, organizations be interested in really focusing in on that kindness piece? What's the impact of it? I, I think uh, it can be an, a very positive impact. It can't be artificial. I don't think you can can it. I'm going to be kind today. I think you have to 
um, value it and work at it and look for opportunities to put yourself in the other person's shoes to understand and with that comes kindness. And I think from that then you do get um, incredible commitment from uh, from staff, from those that you work with, they shape your vision of things, but they also follow the shared vision in a way with productivity and creativity and energy and enthusiasm and fun. And those are all very good things for the work environment, in my view. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have a measurable? I don't know. Does staff turnover rates, are they lower? I would think they would be, but I don't know. There are many factors in that, but Mm -hmm. In general, if people get up with enthusiasm and want to come to work, I think work benefits. Absolutely. Any other messages for leaders on kindness? No, other than it's not in, but we need to make it in. Yeah. It, it, it needs to come back in a way that um, it has terrific potential. And I think it's something that as Canadians can separate us from, <laughs> from other kinds of leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. So my question to you now is, who is the kindest leader? Um, you, know, you and I had a conversation. There's so many that you've worked with in the past and uh, have memory of, but who's the kindest leader that you are working with right now that you can talk about and why? Yeah, I mean, there are a couple. There is one uh, ADM at the Ministry of Health who runs the IT cluster, again, very technical you know, one might think uh, data-driven, bureaucratic, but she uh, is absolutely kind, concerned, interested in people that she works with and people that she works for. So, uh, and again, I've seen people, especially with the current project we're working on, go to the ends of the earth to try to land this very difficult uh, management, um, uh, case and contact management system in the midst of this pandemic work extremely hard with good humor and creativity and i think some of that is about her leadership style so um yeah a remarkable woman i, I mean i i must say i think that there uh, in my pediatric training and pediatricians that i've worked with over the years there are many that have uh, a huge flavor of kindness to them and that maybe it's part of working with kids maybe it's what kids bring out in you right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I must say, number impacted me and modeled, you know, very, very wonderful, caring, nurturing behavior. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you have a name for us? Yeah, sure. The, the person I was talking about at the Ministry of Health is Karen McGibbon. Karen McGibbon. So I can't wait to speak with Karen and, yep. uh, and find out a little bit about her. Okay, lovely. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy late. You're working on projects right now with the, with the ministry, correct? Right, I am. This public health project, yep. Yeah. yeah, so thanks for your service and for being a passionate, kind leader. We need that. Somebody who's incredibly intelligent, has um, that passion and that fire to get things done. And we know it takes kindness to bring people on board with you too and uh, caring and compassion. So thank you so much. You're welcome, Laurie. Lovely to talk to you.